Pandas, the go-to data manipulation and analysis library in Python, offers an array of powerful functions for handling data efficiently. Among these are Query and Eval, two methods designed to streamline data operations, especially when dealing with large datasets. In this short guide, we will delve into the intricacies of Query and Eval in Pandas, exploring their functionality, performance benefits, and the best practices. Welcome to Data Science Cheat Sheets channel, transforming lines into limitless creations. Eval method, because Pandas is built on NumPy library, it allows to carry out vectorized operations which are computationally efficient than using loops. While working with datasets, it is necessary to filter data for some insights. This involves writing expression by creating a mask, which is then passed to the data frame. Even though this may look efficient, NumPy evaluates each sub-expression of the above code separately. Fonda's eval method allows to compute compound expression more efficiently. The same mask is created by writing an expression in a string. This creates a mask with low memory usage. The evil method in pandas enables the evaluation of expressions, but it focuses on column-wise operations. It accepts a string expression representing an operation on columns and applies it efficiently across data frame. The benefit of evil method is that columns can be referred by name. Using pandas evil method, we can compute expressions with the three columns. The data frame evil method allows much more succinct evaluation of expressions with the columns. Notice here that we treat column names as variables within the evaluated expression, and the result is what we would wish. We can use data frame evil method to create a new column and assign to it a value computed from the other columns. In the same way, any existing column can be modified. The data frame evil method supports an additional syntax that lets it work with local Python variables. The at character here marks a variable name rather than a column name, let you efficiently evaluate expressions involving the two namespaces, the namespace of columns and the namespace of Python object. Notice that this at character is only supported by the data frame evil method, not by pandas evil function, because the pandas evil function only has access to the one Python namespace. Now that we've delved into the versatility of the eval method, let's turn our attention to the powerful capabilities offered by the query method. The query method in Pandas provides a convenient way to filter rows from a data frame based on a specified condition. It accepts a string expression representing the filtering condition and evaluated it within the context of the data frame. This eliminates the need for verbose Boolean indexing and enhances code readability. In pandas, rows can be extracted using comparison operators. The same conditions can be specified as a string with the query method. To use variables in query string, prefix the variable name with at. It is also possible to generate a string embedded with variables using fstring. At the end of the video, we will look at the differences between these two methods and how to use both in one code line. Operations that can be performed within the query method include the standard operations that are used during filtering, as well as special ones. Operator in works the same way as is in. If you write not before a column name, you will get correspondence instances. Query method allows easily to combine multiple conditions using and. It is possible to use the OR logic to combine multiple conditions as well. We can also create a condition that compares two or more columns. The not operator can also be implemented as part of the filter in the query method. We can also use simple math operations inside query function. The query function allows for using some built-in functions which provide us with more flexibility. For instance, we can use the ABS function which returns the absolute value of a number. It is possible to use square root function as well. The query function comes in handy when working with dates and times as well. 
we can implement some functions under the DateTime Accessor. In order to use this functionality, we need a column with dates and times. I hear you ask, what if the column name has space in it? Easy, you just wrap the column name in back ticks like this. So what is the difference between eval and query methods? The eval method evaluates a string expression as a Python expression within the context of the data frame. It allows you to perform element-wise operations efficiently. The query method allows you to filter rows of a data frame using a query expression. It is particularly useful when you need to filter rows based on some condition. In summary, eval is used for performing element-wise operations or creating new column based on mathematical expressions, while query is used for filtering rows based on conditions. Both methods offer different functionalities and can be handy depending on the specific task that needs to be accomplished. And finally, how to use eval and query in one code line. One awesome part about Pandas is its chaining operations. Since the copy of the data frame is returned in most operations, the operations can be performed sequentially in a single expression. A reference to the newly created object to perform filtering, assignments, and calculations can be created by using pipe function. The pipe method allows to apply one or more functions to the data frame object. In previous code, pipe function is used twice and it gets a bit cumbersome and could get even worse with longer expressions. The advantage with query and eval is that it will refer to columns inside the current data frame, and thus there is no need to use pipe function. Filtering values is an important part of both data analysis and manipulation. We might be interested in values that fit a certain condition. Similarly, we might want to explore values based on a set of filters. The Pandas methods, Query and Eval are effective tools in writing simple and concise code. Thanks for being a part of our journey today. If you enjoyed the content, hit that subscribe button. By subscribing, you not only show your support for the channel, but also ensure that you never miss out on the exciting content we have in store.